But no matter what comes my way, I dare somebody say, my life is in your hands. With Jesus, I can take it. <laughs> With him, I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way, I tell your neighbor, my life is in his hands. There's a word for us, amen, at this hour, amen, if you're able to stand with us in the reading of God's word, amen. Those that are watching online, God bless you, amen, for joining us at this hour, amen. God has given me a word, amen. I've preached this word, uh, preached this word before, but uh, God kind of let me spin it just a little bit in the aspects of what we're enduring in this season, amen. I was sharing with our leaders a few minutes ago, uh, right before we pray, amen, every Sunday before we go into the sanctuary to ask God to come in and set heavy in this place, Amen. Amen. So God has given me a word. I pray that you would draw your attentions, your mind and your spirit to Daniel, the book of Daniel, the book of Daniel. Amen. The book of Daniel. Amen. Some of you can find it. Some of you can't. <laughs> the book of Daniel. Amen. The third chapter. We're going to start with verse 14, read down to verse 17. Amen. This scripture has blessed me many times before, and I pray that it will bless you on today. Once again, the Daniel, the third chapter, verse 14. Daniel 3. Daniel 3, the third chapter, verse 14 through 17. Daniel 3. All right. Nebuchadnezzar spake, said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that that at what time ye hear the sound of the coordinate, the flute, the harp, the subbut, the psaltery, and the duck dusker, and all the other all the all of the all and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, if ye worship not, ye shall be cast into the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Sounds like the king was a little conceited. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king. Listen, before I even said this, there are times that you got to talk to your enemy. There are times you got to talk to your situation and respond back because there are circumstances that will talk to you. And it says, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Last verse. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the, from the burning, fiery furnace. Check this out. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Oh, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this hour. Give me preaching power. Give me teaching power at this moment. Give us the revelation that we need, God, to go forth, God, at this hour. I pray that our ears are itching to hear what, this, what the word is saying to us at this moment. I pray, God, that for no distractions. I pray, God, that nothing would deter us. God, that nothing would cause our attention in the name of Jesus to hear what you are having to say to us at this hour. So, God, have your way in this place. Have your way in this word. Give us the revelatory thoughts now, God, in the name of Jesus, that we would be able to face the challenges, God, that are coming our way. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the God people, come on and shout and say amen. As I was alluding to before, amen, and I thank God that uh, sometimes you got to go back over a word. Sometimes you got to go back over notes. And sometimes you got to go back over something God has said before because I don't know, many of you may understand, but God's word is rel rel relevant, amen, yesterday, today, and forevermore. 
A lot of times we think that the word that, that God has given us at the hour and the time is just for a moment, but I believe that God's word is for every situation. It's for every circumstance that we face in the challenges of life. And I want you to pray for me at this hour because I was wrestling with this word, amen. Difficulties all shared last night, amen. And it's amazing that when you're doing something, something for the kingdom, amen, the enemy comes in right when you're doing in the middle of your assignment. Can I get amen in this house? I know I'm by myself, amen. Even if you're trying to do something life-changing, amen, the enemy is always going to try to come in the middle of what you're trying to do. Amen. But I believe that we're going to conquer today. Everybody say, we're going to conquer today. Amen. God has given me a word. Amen. Amen. He's given me this word before, and I preached it before, but I'm going to spin it just a little bit. Amen. And I want you to speak to yourself and then speak to your neighbor and say, neighbor and self. Tell your neighbor, you got to have faith in the hard place. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now I want you to shout. Now, this time, I don't want you to talk to your neighbor, and I, want you to, I don't want you to shout to yourself. I don't want you to speak to yourself. I want you to speak to those imps and those devils, amen, that are trying to come against your, your, your destiny. I want you to say, devils, I got faith in this hard place. Now, we've been talking about faith all week, all month, amen, and I pray that all of you have had an opportunity to get into the Bible studies, amen, amen, as I've been teaching about faith, this faith for the future series, amen, as God has given us the things that God has bestowed upon us. We know that we're in transition, and most of you may not really understand the difficulty of transitioning, amen. Trans anytime you have transition, it's hard. I don't care what you're doing. Amen. You got to pack up. You got to move. You got to make plans. You got to do this. You got to do that. Amen. You got to make sure that everybody's involved. You got to make sure the bills are paid. Come on, church. I'm going to hit your roll at some point. Amen. You got to make sure that you don't lose nothing. You got to throw out this. You got to throw out that. You got to shift here. You got to shift there. You got to do the difficult things that sometimes that are not easy to do. But I'm here to tell you that when you got faith, you, could, you should be able to do anything. When you got the right kind of faith, let me say it like this. When you got God faith, when you got God faith, you should be able to have the conquering type of spirit to overcome every challenge and everything that comes in your life. Amen. Let me give you a little background. Amen. Let me give you a little background. The book of Daniel gives us a radiant perspective on God and his divine conviction of truth. Amen. Daniel talks about how God twisted this whole entire situation. God uses Daniel as an eyewitness to the marvels and the marvelous ca cascade of experiences by the power of his hand, amen, through earthly leaders. As, the, as these leaders, it is imperative, and I'm speaking to leaders at, at this moment, it's, it's imperative that you follow God in the moments that you cannot understand or even comprehend the next move. I'm here. You, uh, there are times that God would tell you to do something. It makes no sense. God would tell you to go here and you say, God, why did you tell me to do that? Because God is using you as a piece. He's using you as the puzzle. Amen. Because if you if you have ever worked a puzzle, I know many of you have and many of you have not. Amen. My grandmother used to work puzzles all the time. And it was very confusing because the pieces of the puzzle were all over the place. Amen. And I never understood how difficult and how challenging it was. But the thing that 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 she taught me was is that there was a picture of the puzzle on the box. Ah, she said, what I'm trying to do is you got to have patience and you have to have precision. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm going to hit somebody in a minute. See, what you have to do is when you're facing the challenges of life, amen, your life may be in pieces. Oh, my, but God will give you the picture to let you know what your life is about to look like. Oh, my God. And sometimes you just got to have a little patience and you got to have a little precision. And so she taught me, she said, what you got to do is, uh, grandson, what you got to do is you got to work the pieces together. You got to take this piece and see if it will work with this piece. And if it doesn't work with that piece, then you find the next piece and you continue to find the next piece. And then when you find the right piece, you connect that piece with the other piece. And then you continue on with the process because God uses us as pieces of his puzzle. Oh, come on, church. 
So sometimes it may not, amen, some things may not fit at the moment. But if you continue to work with the pieces, oh, come on, church. Sometimes if you just continue, continue to work with the pieces, the picture will come out in completion. He uses Daniel as a piece as of the puzzle, of the picture that he's trying to paint, amen, to the king, amen. And so in this moment, as leaders, it's imperative that we understand that chapter 2 brings us into the kingdom. He brings us into an understanding that becoming frustrated because now the king becomes frustrated by a dream that he could not remember nor could he interpret. That's chapter two, just in, just in case if we're coming up into chapter three, just in case if you need to go back and get some revelation. He calls the aid of an assistance of magicians and sorcerers and astrologers and the Chaldeans. He comes and tells them that I'm having a dream and I don't understand this dream. And he tells them that, uh, that he assembles them all together, gets them, and they, tr and they cannot interpret this dream. None of them could help the king in his understanding. So he becomes frustrated and he commands the host to kill all of the council. And therefore, he goes after somebody to ask somebody in the kingdom who can interpret this dream. Therefore, he tells the captain of the host, go get Daniel. I decree to go get Daniel because I'm convinced that Daniel will help me interpret what is going on at this hour. I'm setting this up for y'all because Daniel rides into the palace. He meets the king. Daniel, therefore, tells the king, and by divine gift, God uses Daniel as the piece of the puzzle to put this whole entire picture together. He tells the, he tells the king and interprets the dream of a golden image that was the representation of idol worship that will be dismantled by a stone. Mm. Okay, so what is the stone? The stone is Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, the stone is Jesus Christ. The stone is mentioned in the second verse of the typology of Christ. The Bible says in Matthew 21 and 20, uh, excuse me, 21 and 42, that Jesus said unto them, did ye never read in the scriptures that the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become of the head of the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and is marvelous in our eyes. So in essence, he's saying that he's trying to tell the king, king, you're about to do something that is not biblical. You're about to do something that is not the divine will of God. You're about to create an idol worship that is for the kingdom. There is for, therefore, he tells, he tells the king, and he tells the men of God, do not do this because if you do it, the stone, oh my God, the stone is going to dismantle your worship. Mm. We believe that a lot of times that Christ is not in the Old Testament, but he's represented hidden in the Old Testament many times. Amen. Amen. So he tells the king, amen, that, that if you do this, amen, the very thing that God, the, the very thing that you're trying to do Amen. God is going to dismantle, dismantle this idol worship. So, therefore, the deity of Christ represents God in himself in flesh, and Christ is the foundation to which the church is established. You must understand that when we're talking about God, we're talking about Christ. And when we're talking about Christ, we're talking about God. Let me help you. Amen. Some, some of you think and some people think that, that there are three in difference. No, there are three in one. Amen. Have you ever have you have you ever experienced water in in three different elements? Amen. There's water in a glass. Amen. And then there's ice in the water. If you really think about it, they're all H2O. They may be in a different form, but it's still water. Have you ever boiled water on a stove? Come on, church. Amen. And the mist of the of the water of the steam was coming up off the pot. Amen. It does not mean that it's not water. It's still water, regardless if it's cold, if it's, if it's hot, or if it's ice. Therefore, we must understand that Christ and God and the Holy Ghost is the same. Come on, church. Amen. Because three are in one. Because the Bible told me there is one Lord, uh -oh, one faith, uh -oh, and one baptism. So when you're talking about the stone, you're talking about Christ. And when you're talking about Christ, you're talking about God. So he's telling them at this time that if you, if you create this idol worship, you're disrespecting God in his deity. 
So after which Daniel is rewarded. So now Daniel now is rewarded. I'm leading up to where I'm going. Daniel now is rewarded. Amen. He's rewarded for the interpretation of the king's dream. He gives great gifts and anoints and appoints Daniel the chief of the governors. And now he's made ruler over the whole province of Babylon. Then Daniel is not forgetting of his friends. And therefore, he requests Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come over the affairs of the providence of Babylon. Now it takes us into chapter 3. I had to set this up for y'all. So now chapter 3, now Nebuchadnezzar ignores, amen, the warning of the prophet. He, he ignores the warning of the prophet, and King Nebuchadnezzar makes this golden image without the full understanding of what the man of God is telling him. Now he makes a decree that when you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, and all the other instruments, you have to fall down and worship this idol image. Now the decree is made. The decree is made. This thing is going on. But you have to understand that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were the Hebrew names. That was not their true names. We had Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. These were their true names. These were their God-given names. Amen. And so a, t a lot of times now we have to understand that we, we have to be careful of what we bow down to. I'm going to say that again. We got to be careful of what we yield to. We have to be careful that the, in the now day age, we have to be careful of what we accept in our surroundings. I don't know about y'all, but if you're not godly and you ain't speaking right, amen, you're not going to be in my surroundings. Amen. I'm going to say that again, because sometimes you got to correct people. You got to get people. To, listen, if you're not on my level, amen, I'm sorry, but we can't hang out together. If we ain't on the same language, we can't hang out together. I'm going to hit your roll in a minute. Amen. If we're not thinking on the same thing, if we're not thinking godly, we can't have phone conversations. We can't text each other. I just had to have a conversation with one of, my, one of my customers the other day, amen, and she's cussing and fussing, and I told her, I said, listen, the same respect I give you is the same respect that you give me. Don't give me, those, don't give me all that foul language. Don't tell me what you're going to do. Don't tell me all that other stuff and whatever, and guess what? After I corrected her, amen, she came back to me nice. Sometimes you got to get people and correct people. Oh, come on, church, and you can't bow down to them. Because, come on, that means you bow down to idol worship. You bow down to things that are unrighteous. I'm teaching y'all today. And therefore, what you got to do is you can't let, this is my first point, you cannot allow your faith to bow down to your challenge. I'm going to say that. Because you, because you asked me, Minister Hayes, I'm going to say it again. Tell your neighbor, don't let your faith. Come on, church. I need a talk in church today. Don't let your faith bow down to your challenge. Nebuchadnezzar, in verse 14, said, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not serve ye my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. They were not bowing. Now Daniel comes to these three friends, and now the king receives word that these three will not bow down to the command that he authorized to the kingdom. The king makes this idol worship to pull his attention. At times in crisis, we have to make, we have to make sure that we're not drawing attention to small gods. We have to make sure that we're not drawing, uh, drawing attention to life challenges because when it's all said and done, there are going to be situations in your life that are going to make you try to bow. That's going to make you try to belittle your faith. But I'm here to tell you that your faith is bigger than your problem. Your faith is bigger than your challenge. Your faith is bigger than the criticism. Your faith is bigger than the things that are not happening in your life. Sometimes you got to have your faith, amen, bigger than the challenge, and your challenge should bow down to your faith. Can I get somebody to help me in this house? 
All of us have been in a hard place where we have crumbled. We have been disappointed. Amen. We wanted to give up. We wanted to throw in the towel. We said we were done. We were through. We didn't want to do it no more. We didn't want to be a leader. We didn't want to be a minister. We didn't want to be a deacon. We didn't want to be a, mini a, a musician. Come on. We didn't want to be a pastor. We didn't want to do the things that life has challenged us to do. But I would not allow my faith oh my, to over. Come on. I would not my, allow my challenges to overtake my faith because I have a faith in God, with God, and through God. And if this word ain't for you, guess what? It's going to be for me. Because I believe at this moment, LRC, we're transitioning. And it's hard. This is a hard place for us to be. We don't know the next minute how things are going to happen, but I have faith in God that God is going to keep us. God is going to sustain us. God is going to lead us. God is going to direct us. God is going to encourage us. God is going to push us. God is going to give us the power to overcome every challenge and therefore, I'm not going to allow any challenge that overtake my faith. I believe God is going to give me the faith to overcome this circumstance, and God is going to give you the same. We yield to too many things. We crumble to too many circumstances that seem, I told the leaders, that seem to be overwhelming. Amen. And there are too many times that situations seem to be overwhelming, but if you have the faith of God and you have the power of God, you shall be able to over, over, overcome anything. I, I think I heard my Bible said that I am more than a conqueror. And he said, I am persuaded that I will let nothing, no death, no height, no principality, no things to come overtake me because I'm persuaded that I shall be the conqueror. I shall be the head and not the tail. I shall be the lender and not the borrower. I shall be above and not beneath. I'm going to hit somebody in a minute. Tell your neighbor, my faith ain't going to bow down. You know what your faith is? Your faith, your faith is your belief in your God. Come on. That means God, Yahweh, El Shaddai. That means God always with us. He's the master of the universe. That means I will not bow down to idol worship. I will not bow down to the small things that got me upset. Because too many times we let the small things get us upset. So the king is drawing attention to idol Idol worship. You know what idol worship is? A small God. I'm going to hit you. Come on, church. Come on. I need y'all to write some stuff down. Keep your Bible open. Idol worship is a small God. Too many times we allow the small things to become our God. I hope that's a real good point right there. And, and, and in times of crisis, we have made these issues harder. And it draw our attention in the wrong direction. And this king is pulling Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to his attention, not God's attention. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm gonna say, let me let me help you. Let me help you with this. How many of you have been guilty of allowing people to pull you from your affairs to their affairs? Thank you for the hand that got, thank you for the hand, thank you for the few hands that came up. I'm going to say that again, and maybe you'll understand what I'm saying. Okay, let me say it like this. How many of you have been pulled into something that was not your purpose, therefore it took you off of your purpose? Mm. How many of you have been involved in situations that, that it wasn't your fault, but, but they pulled you in to fix it? So now it's taking away time from the things that you need to be working on to work on somebody else's mess. Check this out, that they messed up. In essence, in essence, the king was pulling them to idol worship, small God, something that was smaller than their God. Did you get that? He was pulling them to idol worship, a small image that was smaller than our God. And there are times that people will pull you to their small God and pull you from our God. Thank you, Lady Carol, the big God. So 
So in essence, these gods were drawn away from their faith, their attention to spirituality, the capabilities of understanding who God really is. Idols are created, amen, for the purpose of pulling away the deity, the authority of God himself. And the devil does not, devil, the devil does not, he's not concerned about the big G because he wants you to serve him. Mm. So, so in essence, you have to understand that when I'm talking about faith will not bow down to the challenge. Any challenge that you face, any circumstance that comes your way, you got to have a Shadrach, Meshach, and a Billy, and a Bitnigo type of faith. I almost said that wrong, but you gotta have the you gotta have that kind of faith. Amen. They told the king they wasn't gonna bow down. Sometimes you gotta speak to your challenges. Sometimes you gotta speak to uh oh let me say it like this. Sometimes you gotta speak to people. Am I teaching somebody at this moment? They were having conversations with King and said, Oh King, we will not answer in this matter, but we know, and I'm here to myself, we know a God that's able. Okay. All right. So, so, so we have to understand that, that when it comes to these challenges of life, the challenges that we face, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. You, you understand that, that they were promoted, amen, because their names were changed. Their names were changed when, when Babylonian captivity took over the land. So the names originally, amen, their names really, Hananiah means grace and mercy. Write that down. Hananiah, the first name, well, that's, that's, that's uh, Shadrach. Shadrach's name originally is Hananiah. Hananiah means grace and mercy. Grace and mercy means grace and mercy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hit something here just in a minute. Just, just follow me what I'm saying. Meshach was Michelle. His name translated is who is asked for. Who is asked for. And Abednego, his name is Azariah. His name originally means helped by God. Wow. Okay, so if I put their names all together... Check this out. What did I say the names were? Grace, mercy, help by God, who asked for. So let me put it together. If I put their names together because all of their names and all of them were challenged by a hard place. So if I put their meanings together, check this out. Who asked for grace and mercy, help by God? Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. What did I tell you the names were? The original names, check this out, were Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. So if I take their translations and put it together, literally it says, who asked for grace and mercy helped by God. In essence, their name, their name was the point of bringing them the help that they needed in a hard place. My God. So their name, they didn't have to call on God. It was their name. Jesus Christ. Come on, I really wish that y'all th put your thinking caps on. It was their name. Once again, what did it say? Who asked for grace and mercy helped by God? Your challenge is going to come to the point that you're going to need a name. Oh, and what you got to do is their name, my, their name literally got God involved in their hard place. That name, who is asked for grace and mercy helped by God. There are going to be times that you need some grace. There's going to be some times you need some mercy, and there's going to be some times you need some help. It was their original names that God came in the midst of their hard place. That was real good. y'all. That was so good. That was good. And sometimes you got to call on the right name. You can't call on everybody. You can't call on your friends. You can't call on your family members. Amen. You can't call on your road dog. You got to call the right name. Tell your neighbor, call the right name. In our hard places, that's where we are. We're so prone, we're so prone to put all of our issues, amen, and post on TikTok and Facebook, Instagram. 
There are times that you just got to be covered up. There are times that you got to, you can't put all your stuff on Facebook. You cannot make every public thing, you cannot make everything public. People got hear me good. You can't, it's not always good to make everything public. Do you realize, do you realize that the devil is the prince of the air? And so when we are putting things in social media, we're putting it in the ether ways, which is part of the air. Oh, my God. So what we're doing is we're giving the devil notice that we're going through so what does he do? He draws his attention to the very thing that you put in the air. Mm, that was so good teaching right there. So you got to be careful what you put in the atmosphere, because when you put it in the atmosphere, you're putting it in the point that he can reach it. Mm. Sometimes there are things that you got to have sackcloth and ashes. There are things that sometimes you just got to, you can't speak to everybody about, and you can't pray to everybody about, and you can't put it in public in public places. Because he's the prince of the air. So when you make it known and you put it in his atmosphere, guess what? It draws his attention. That's some good teaching right there. So be careful what you put on Facebook. Be careful what you put on Instagram. Be careful what you put on TikTok. I like the way I say that. Be careful of what you put in the atmosphere because it will draw the attention and it will make your hard place harder. Am I talking to somebody in this house? So, so, so what I love, what I love about God, this, I, got, I got two more points and then we're going to be done. I got two more points. What I, what I love about God, what I love is this scripture, I always say this. I always say this, and I love this scripture. Um, Psalm, one, one of the Psalms that I love, he says, um, he will prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. <laughs> so so what, I love, what, I, what I love about God is God will set you up to show your victory in the face of your enemy. My next point is, your hard place will require a witness. Oh, my God. Tell your neighbor, write this down as a note, your hard place. Come on, say it with some conviction, y'all. Come on, I need an LIC church like I know. Tell your neighbor and say it to yourself, your hard place will require a witness. Verse 17, and he said, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. So they said to the king, once again, God, you know what, devil, king, we're not worried about what you're about to do, because what happened is, is that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it was told to the king that these three men of his staff did not bow down to the golden image as it was coming through the city. So he gets upset. He tells the governors, he tells the chief of the host, go get them. Because everybody bowed down except these three. So now he gets mad. He gets upset. Tells them, listen, why would you not bow down? And he says, in essence, we don't serve that God. We serve this God. And so he gets upset. He gets mad. He gets angry. He binds them up, ties them up. He tells the men, seven men, he tells seven men, he says, men, I want you to put them in a place that I know they will be consumed. Ooh, y'all better just catch that. I want you to put them in a place where they're about to be consumed. I'm a, I'm a, I want you to put them in a place 
where there is no options of exits. I want you to put them in a place where they can't get out. I want you to put them in a fiery furnace because this particular furnace only had one way in and one way out. Can I, can I get an amen in this house? Amen. There are going to be some situations that I'm speaking to you right now. There's going to be one way in ha, and one way out. That's a hard place. Have you ever been in a hard place that you didn't have options? I know I ain't talking about, I know that I'm not talking by myself. Have you ever been a back against a wall you didn't have? Let me say it like this. Have you ever been in a hard place where you didn't have an exit? Mm. So God, so I know God is with these three men. So, so he tells the men, I want you to put this furnace seven times hot. Consuming place. A hard place. Have you ever been in a place where it consumed your spirit? Have have you ever been in a place mentally you've been consumed? Like like you you didn't think about nothing else but that problem. I know I ain't by myself. Have you you ever been in a financial place that, oh, my God, I got so many bills, I can't think straight. I got so much stuff that I, I got a little here, a little there, but I can't pay everything I need to play. See, that's a hard place where you don't have answers. Things like this will consume you. I know I ain't by myself. And all of us have been in a place of consuming. We've all been in a place where it has overtaken us. We've all been in a place, a hard place, where we had one way in. Uh, y'all, y'all getting it in one way out. So he tells the men, I want you to fire up this furnace. I want you to, I want you to, I want you to fire it up so bad that I know that when I put them in the hard place, it will instantly consume them. Mm. Come on, I need somebody to respond to me. Amen. How many of you have been in a situation where you thought that once, once you in, immediately got into this situation, you thought it was going to immediately consume you? He said, I want you to put them in the fiery furnace. Seven times hot. Okay. So, they fire up the furnace. Seven times hotter than it's ever been. The Bible even indicates that the men that was firing up the furnace got consumed. Jesus, come on, church. Y'all better pay attention to what I'm saying. The men, the men, check this out. The men that was firing up the furnace got consumed. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. So, so, so they throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the furnace Bound up. Y'all follow where I'm going? Throwing. <laughs> there are going to be times, times in your situation that you're going to be thrown into a situation where you should have been consumed. The Bible says, y'all hear what I said? They said the Bible says that the men that were firing up the furnace got burned up. But Shadrach, Meshach went in the furnace and we're not consumed. Oh, so you mean to tell me that God is going to put me in a place where other people got consumed, but God, you covered me so bad that when I get into the hard place, that you're going to keep me in the hard place, and it's not going to consume me. Oh, oh my God. I, I just thank you, God. Thank you for that word. Because all of us have been in situations where we should have been consumed, but God is the keeping. Oh, God. What did I tell you the name word? Grace and mercy. Oh, my God. Grace and mercy is going to be your cover. Grace and mercy is going to be your keeper. Grace and mercy is going to be your water in the midst of your fiery furnace. I'm preaching better than y'all responded. And God's helped me to tell somebody in this place that God is going to cover you when the situation should have burnt you up. God is going to cover you when you should have got consumed. Oh, my God. I feel like preaching right now because God told me to tell somebody, guess what? Just when you're about to be consumed, guess what? He's going to set up a witness. 
Oh, my God. So they went into the furnace. They went into the furnace. They went into the furnace. And God told me to tell somebody that God is going to set up your king. He's going to set up a witness. He's going to set somebody up. And as soon as you go into your furnace, God told me to tell somebody, you're not going to be singed by the burn. You're not going to be consumed by the by what the devil put you in. But I believe by the word of God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, therefore, for everything God has placed in their life, God told me to tell somebody that right now, I'm your water. I'm going to put the fire out. Tell somebody that God is my water. God is my keeper. And therefore, when they went in the furnace, somebody told the king, and the king had to go to the furnace because he thought that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the hard place. They were in the fire. They were should have been consumed. But my Bible, my Bible told me, and it said they were bound up, chained up. They only had one place. They were in the hard place. They were in the fiery place. And God told me to tell somebody that your place may be hard. It may be difficult. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had faith in God. I'm here to tell somebody. I'm not worried about the fire. I'm not worried about the tanglement. I'm not worried about the king. Because the Bible, the Bible, the Bible told me that the king got word and hand to go to the furnace. And when he went, he thought that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego should have been burnt, should have been consumed, should have been dead. But he looked down in the furnace and God revealed himself because he just didn't see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego but he saw a fourth person and the Bible says the Bible says the Bible says that it looked like here's the stone it looked like the son of the living God I'm here to tell you that God will show up in your heart place God will show up in your fiery furnace God will he will he'll show up in the difficult places he will show up that's my last point when you got faith when you're challenged and you in the fiery the fiery furnace tell your neighbor God will he will he will he will he will show up just in the nick of time just when you should have been you should have been consumed God will show up just when you were just about to be overtaken in your spirit God will he'll show up just when you lost everything God will show up just when you working with lack and slack God will show up tell somebody God will God will God will he will show up I'm happy about this word because God says they came out not smelling like smoke they came out fully clothed I'm here to tell you you're about to come out you're about to come out you're about to come out put your hands together and bless him I 
I'm happy about this word because my hard place is right now this hard place I believe that God will sustain me in the hard place I believe that God will keep you in your hard place I believe that God will cover you in your hard place I believe that God will based on the word he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the almighty tell your neighbor God will God will God will show up in your hard place put your hands together and give God a praise Y'all ain't praising him. Y'all ain't praising him. I want somebody to give God a praise in this place. Uh, you are in a hard place. Uh, you are in a challenged place. Uh, you are in a difficult place. Uh, but I believe uh, that Shadrach, uh, Meshach, uh, and Abednego uh, was giving God uh, worship in the fire. Uh, tell somebody uh, worship in the fire. Uh, worship in the hard place. Uh, worship when it's hard. I got faith, faith, for without faith, it's impossible to please him. I want to please my God. I want to please El Shaddai. I want to please Anani. I want to please Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Taniskanu. I want to please my God. Tell your neighbor, please God with your faith. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Hear me good, people of God. I told him, I told him in, the, in prayer that a lot of times this word may not hit you now, but it's going to hit you later. Things may be good, may be good smelling like roses. But guess what? You will endure a hard place. I will not bow down to the hardness of my challenge. Mm -mm. I'm encouraging you at this moment because I really need you to listen to me. Too many times we are so emotional that we detach ourselves from the consciousness of faith by our emotions. We detach ourselves from God by being in the furnace. But I just realized that fire represents the anointing. Do I, do I have a church in here to understand what I'm saying? I'm going to say it again because every time I say something like this, I, I, need, I really need y'all to get it. The fire represents an anointing. Let me say it like this. If you're not going through, maybe there's no anointing. Fire purifies. 
But fire represents the Holy Ghost. Mm. <laughs> it represents the Holy Ghost. So that means if I'm going in a fiery situation, I got fire that's going to fight fire. You mean to tell me that that fire represents anointing. So if if I have the anointing and I'm in a fiery place, the anointing that I have is going to fight the fire that I'm in. Yes. Yes, it's going to fight it. Because fire cannot consume fire. Oh my god. Fire cannot consume fire. One will take over the other. Fire will take over the other. So my anointing in my hard place is going to take over my hard place. <clears throat> Count a joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Too many times we want the easy way out. Too many times we want the quick exit. But do you realize the fiery furnace only had one exit? It, it had one exit. Who's your exit? It's God. I need somebody to just lift your hands and say, God, I thank you for my exit. You my exit. Come on, come on, come on. Thank I, I, right now, come on. Whatever your truth is, whatever your fiery furnace is, whatever your hard place, come on, come on. Speak it out of your mouth and say, God, here I am. I'm in my hard place right now, but I believe that you are my exit. You, come on, come on, one more time, one more time. You are my exit. Exit. One way in, one way out. But I, I know without a shadow of a doubt that God will bring me out. Check this out. Read chapter, read the last chapter, read the last chapter, because check this out. The same king that was trying to kill him, at the end of the story, God says, check this out. God spoke to the king, check this out, and told the land, I just witnessed their God. And what we would do from this moment, we are going to dismantle the little God that I created. And we will now worship their God that they just showed me. Oh, not only that, the king not just brought them out of the furnace and not just accepted their God, but he blessed them with more than they had when they went in the furnace. Oh, y'all ain't ready for it. Y'all ain't ready for it. God just told me to tell somebody, God is going to give you more than you had when you went into your hard place. Y'all ain't, ain't ready for no blessing. Y'all ain't ready for no blessing. Y'all ain't ready for no blessing. Tell your neighbor, I'm ready for my blessing, but I got to endure the fiery furnace. And God told me to tell somebody that you're going to get more than you did when you came into your hard place. Y'all ain't ready for it. Y'all ain't ready for it. Y'all ain't ready for it. I'm going to say it again. God told me to tell somebody that you are about to get more than you did when you went into your furnace. Before you went into your hard place. I'm ready. Tell your neighbor, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to get what God has for me. Because I endure hardship. I endure the fire. I endure everything that the devil threw my way. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to get 
what God has for me because I'm ready. If you're ready to get your place, to get your destiny, to get your blessing, I need somebody to give God praise, even if it's hard, even if it's difficult, even if it's rough, even if it's tough. I believe that on the other side of your rough place, God, God is about to bless everybody. It's been hard, it's been difficult, it's been challenging, but I'm ready. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I'm ready to get it. The blessing, the blessing did not come until after the furnace. Your blessing is not going to come until you have to come out of your hard place. There are times that God wants to see if you're capable of handling the hard place. Some people say God does not tempt us. Some people say that God does not challenge us. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, don't you, don't you be deceived. Don't you, don't you be deceived that God does not challenge. God challenges you just to see if you have the confession of your faith. Soon as a problem hit, we bowing down. We falling out, throwing tantrums, mad crying whining. But God says, your tears don't move me. It's your faith. Your tears don't have no substance because your tears are emotion. I'm sorry to tell you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it hurt your feelings if I say that. Your, 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 your tears are emotions, but when you got the confidence of faith, you could be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they said, O oh, king, we know that God is more than able. Oh, see, so you got to be able to talk to your situation and say, situation, I, I may be in the middle of this, and this is my hard place, but I serve a God that is more than able. Can I get an amen in this house? Don't allow your situations to get you emotional. Allow your situations to get you spiritual. That you can speak, even in the midst of your fiery furnace. Even in the midst of your fiery furnace, that you can still declare that God is still God. He's, st he's still on the throne. And what I love about the story is that just when they were in the midst of it, that's when God showed up. Can I, help, can I help somebody right there? I'm going to encourage you just in the midst of what you're going through, Quinna, Deacon Bland, Philip, Nay, Helena, Lady Carol, Deke, Whitlow, all of y'all that's in this place. I may not call everybody, but what you're going through at this moment, I want to encourage you that God is going to show up in the midst of your hard place. What I love about it, if he did it before, oh, he'll do it again. Can I get somebody right there? Say it right there. If he did it before, he'll do it again. LRC, we are in the fire right now. <laughs> we are two years of a pandemic. We have been in the fire. We have been challenged. We've had people come and go. We've had people commit and leave. We had our tides go up and down, finances all over the place. 
People, the property management didn't want to talk to us, didn't even want to renew, but I still believe that God is still with us. And I want to encourage somebody that's listening to me at this moment, God is still with you. He's, he's right there. He showed up in the midst of that furnace. He sh- and guess what? He's going to show up in the midst of your fire. That's what, the, that's what my Bible says, that he would never leave you. He would never forsake you. And what I love about it, they were not consumed. I really need you to get this. This is my last. I'm done. Receive this prophetically. People of God, your hard place will not consume you. Tears coming down your face. You may have things going on all the place, but guess what? It's not going to consume you. Yes, you go do do bo she got that about she. Yeah, that that about she. Yeah, that family problems, health problems, physical problems, mental problems. It will. It's not going to consume you. Yeah, you go bo she got that about she go do do bo she. It's not going to overtake you. I decree it over you. I decree it over your home, over your house over your life, over your mind, over your heart, over your spirit, over your family, your wife, your husband, your children, your brother, your sister, your aunties, your uncles. I decree it over your life. It's not going to consume you. Mm -mm. Nothing else. This hard place is going to make me harder. This hard place is going to make me have a stronger faith. This hard place is going to make me fight back. Oh, I need some fighters in the house. This hard place is going to make me fight. Do I have any fighters in the house? Oh, come on, come on. Oh, we used to fight when we were in in grade school. Do I have any fighters in the house? Tell your neighbor, I'm going to fight on. I'm going to fight this thing. This thing is not to come to kill me, but to make me better in my faith. Faith for the hard place.